Hello, a pretty lovely, lovely but highly chilly good evening from here in Charlie and hope as always that each one of you are keeping absolutely fine and you all are in happy state of mind because we are today starting this particular course, Corporate Financial Reporting, of course English version, for June 2418 primarily but in case if some of you are attempting December 24 attempt, even then this particular course will be very very helpful for you correct so today we are going to start the journey as I have already told you and before we move further let me actually remind you two three points before we start what we call the proceedings of the day it is very very important to understand that prior to this particular session in fact this is going to be the first session no doubt about it prior to this particular session recently I uploaded a video wherein we talked at great length regarding the what we call strategy, regarding the preparation methodology, regarding the procedural aspects of this particular course. So you need to have a good look over that particular video and that is titled as preparation strategy for CFR June 24 or December 24 attempt. Over there I have mentioned regarding the entire syllabus, correct? And I have marked out what exactly your syllabus is all about and how it can be segmented into different parts and which are the what we call areas wherein you need to actually give a good look at and which are the areas where you need to take greater focus correct so today now because this is going to be the first session we are going to start and before that we start just two more minutes actually i'm going to take we are waiting uh, the SAS also because some of you are joining us through what we call youtube and some of the students are joining us through what we call other modes like SAS. So we are waiting the green signal. So the moment I'm going to get the green signal, I'm going to start the session very soon. Don't worry about that. It will consume uh, one or two more minutes, correct? But in the meantime, let me also tell you uh, another important announcement. Earlier we told that we are going to give you three ebooks and one hard copy. But now we have decided to give you instead of what we call three ebooks we are going to give you four hard copies correct and some of you might have already actually paid the amount but you need not require to worry about that soon you are going to receive the books because generally it requires a time of 10 days before the book reaches the destination is it clear to you or not instead of now one hard book we are going to deliver four hard copies and no ebooks now Whenever you are going to attend the live session, it is of paramount importance for each one of you to see to it that you must attend each and every class with great focus, correct? You make a proper timing because sometimes it will become very difficult for us to leave the video on. However, as per the new terms now, because earlier we had told that video will stay at least for 24 hours, correct? This is exactly what I said earlier in my earlier video when I made the what we could announcement regarding the live classes but now it is not possible for us to leave the video even for 24 hours however over there we have mentioned very clearly very clearly correct the moving course will get over and we have promised already that we are going to see to it that course is completed by 31st of April 2024 and the moment the course will be over all the videos will be given to you in your Google Drive so on that count you need to require to worry about this particular fact but it is very important to watch the video during the live session itself because the moment the session will be over after that video will be put into private mode however the first chapter will remain for a long period of time however after the starting of the second one it is not possible for us to leave the video even for a second after the session so these are the new terms which you need to take care of and today this is going to be the first session so we are going to start the class now because we have received the green signal also and a very lovely good evening to Wasimuddin. Uh, so we as you know in my earlier video preparation strategy we had talked about this particular fact that your entire course can be divided into three segments one is practical part another one is what we call your theoretical chapters and besides that we have India's. Of course, we are going to supply you four ebooks. The one, the first volume, what volume one will deal with the practical chapter, volume two with theoretical chapter, volume three obviously is going to deal up with what we call India's. Besides that, we are going to give you another book that will encompass the MCQ, MCQ question bank. So four books will be supplied to you. Clear? 
I hope that things have become clearer to you. If it has, then kindly let me know that things have become clearer to you. Now, obviously, we are going to start with some formidable chapters and prominent among them is your India's 103 business combination. It's a pretty strong chapter. It's a formidable chapter, very, very lengthy chapter at the same time. And technically, it's a sort of chapter where lots of technicalities are there. So that is why you need to be a little bit more attentive when where we are going to do this particular chapter. Correct. These are the notes of India's 103 and we will upload these notes till the time when you are going to receive the books. Correct. So that you should not lose out on anything. These notes you can will be uploaded on our Telegram channel and tomorrow by 1130 you can download it. The link is given in the description box itself. Is it clear to you? So on such count, now we start this particular session. And in order to start this particular session, let me first of all create the space. Correct. So as I told you, we are going to start with business combination first of all. So business combination, this is the chapter which we are taking up first to start what we call these live sessions. Obviously, these live sessions for CMA final paper 18, that is corporate financial reporting. Is it clear to you or not? For working people, like leave the video till 12 o'clock, sir. See, actually, this is the problem which we are facing. You must try to understand our pretty comments also, correct? Uh, the first chapter, we will think of that, but uh, this is Abhijit, I think. Abhijit, we will try to see to it, but at the same time, now let me start the session because a lovely good evening to everyone whosoever is joining us, either through YouTube mode or through SAS mode, correct? So now, in the S103, we are going to start. Now, very important for you. See here, if you are going to take the things casually, then ultimately we may not be able to drive the sort of mileage which I would love you to. So best thing is that you presume as if you are sitting in a classroom and please open down your register pen or pencil, whatever it is. And it is important for us to write the things which I am going to write right now so that we can comprehend it in a manner which I wish you to. Correct? So, in order to start this particular chapter, India is 103. So those among you who have joined us late, I just thought earlier that it is a formidable chapter, important chapter, high strength chapter and pretty long chapter. So let's start now. India is 103. Lots of prefacing words I have already spoken. So some of you might have got bored. So now I am going to start India is 103. It's a chilly cold out here today in Delhi. And it is very difficult to hold down the pen also. NDS 103, we are starting. Before we start, NDS 103, as you know, it deals with what we call business combinations and restructuring. Correct? We will do business combinations. Then we are, along with that, we are also going to do amalgamation and what we call internal reconstruction. Very lovely. Good evening once again to each and everyone. Those who are joining late sometime, it becomes very difficult for me because now I have already started the session. So, <clears throat> kindly pay attention towards this particular point which I am trying to explain to you. Before we start what we call India as 103, as a professional student, it is very important for you to understand some important facets regarding this particular chapter. So before we start, let me actually just explain two, three points. The first one is that, and kindly note down these points. These points will become very handy for you later on. Suppose there is an enterprise by the name of E1. And there is an, another enterprise by the name of E2. Correct? We further presume that E1 has invested in E2. And the investment of E1 in E2 is, let us say, in between 1 to 19.99%. Suppose if I have invested some amount in other entity and the range of my investment is from 1% to 19.99%, that means less than 20%. Suppose I have invested in another entity and my investment comprises of 7%, 8%, 9%, 10% till up to 19.99%. So in this case, before I move further, let me also explain it. First of all, although at this particular level, it doesn't look nice to say such things, but still to make you understand better. First of all, you must understand that in this particular case, E1 will be termed as investor entity because it has invested in the other entity. 
So E1 will be considered as investor entity. Is it clear to you or not? Similarly, the entity in which we have invested will be considered as investee entity. It will be considered as investee entity. I N V E S T double E. Investee entity. First of all, now I told you if my investment in other entity is in between 1 to 19.99 percent then generally such investment are considered as normal investment. Such investments are generally considered as normal investment. Is it clear to you? Such investments are generally considered as normal investments. Normal investments. Normal investment. If my investment range is between 1 to 19.99%, such investments are considered as normal investment. Is it clear to you? In this case, as a professional student, you need to understand that the investor will account the investment which it has made in the other entity in its separate financial statement only. In this case, as I told you, the investor will do the accounting for such investment. Accounting will be done by the investor entity because investor has invested in the other entity and the accounting will be done accounting will be done accounting will be done by the investor by the investor entity the investor entity is e1 investor entity investor entity in its, in its separate financial statement, in its separate financial statement and investor will do the accounting as per what we call India's 109. So important point which you need to understand is that if our investment range in the other entity is in between 1 to 19.99% in that case, it will it is considered as normal investment and the entity which has invested the amount will account such investment in separate financial statements only as per India's 109. As per India's 109. As per India's 109. And when we say as per India's 109, what does it mean? It means India's 9 states that investments must be recorded at fair value. Is it clear to you or not? That means if you have invested in other entity and your investment range is in between 1 to 19.99%, 1 to 19.99%, so it will be considered as normal investment and in this case, the investor will account, will do the accounting for such investment in separate financial statement and he will do the accounting as per India's 109. And under financial instrument chapter, you will learn about India's 109. India's 109 states that such investment must be recorded at fair value. In this case, no question of preparing any consolidated financial statement. In this case, no question of what we call preparing any consolidated financial statement. Is it clear to you or not? This is the first point which I wanted you to actually understand. Second point. Now we move over to the second point. As a professional student, you must be aware of all such things, correct? Now, under the second point, what I take, in this case, under the second case, I again presume there is an entity by the name of E1 and there is another entity by the name of E2. Now, in this case, our investment range is 20% to 49.99%, 49.99%. First of all, now you let me know, who is the investor entity in this particular case? Lots of messages I have been receiving, Kaushik, uh, and we are working upon it. I cannot commit at this particular time. You must also understand my pretty comment also. Please try to understand all these things, and we are not using a very high-profile language, and you must not 
have any difficulty in comprehending actually all these things. Anyway, now we come over to the second case. E1 is the entity which has invested in E2. Those who are attending the class, please let me know who is the investor entity in this case and who is the investee entity in this particular case. E1 is the investor entity. E2 is the investing entity. Investee entity. This time my range of investment is 20% or more, but it is up to 49.99%. So if I have invested in some other entity, try to understand if we have invested in some other entity and the range of investment is in between 20% to 49.99%, 20%, 21%, 32%, 40%. Correct? If range of investment is from 20% to 49.99%, in this particular case, the investee entity will become your associate entity. This is the point which you need to understand. Is it clear to you? So your investee entity E2 will be considered as your associate entity, as your associate entity. Is it clear to you or not? Of course, E1 will be considered as investor entity. Now, you are the investor entity and E2 will become your associate entity. In this particular case, investor entity E1, the E1 will have to prepare two types of financial statement. This time, E1 will prepare two types of financial statement. One separate financial statement if my investment range is 20 percent or more but up to 49.99 percent in that case the investor entity will have to prepare two financial statement one separate financial statement and another one is consolidated financial statement cfs here stands for consolidated financial statement and not for cash flow statement is it clear to you or not so in this particular case, as I just told you, we are supposed to, we means E1, the investor entity. The investor entity this time will have to prepare two types of financial statement. As I just told you, one is separate financial statement. Another one is known as consolidated financial statement. Now, separate financial statement will be prepared as per India S27. As per India S27. As per India S27. Is it clear to you what are the provisions of India's 27? I will let you know later on. But at this moment, it is suffice to say that the investor entity will have to prepare in this particular case, how many types of financial statement? Two types of financial statement. One separate financial statement and another one is consolidated financial statement. However, consolidated financial statement, you must understand, shall be prepared by the investor entity as per India S28 as per india s28 so if your investment range is 20 percent or more but up to 49.99 percent in that particular case the other entity becomes your associate entity and in this case the investor entity will have to prepare two types of financial statement as i told you one separate financial statement uh, and separate financial statement shall be prepared as per end AS 27 while consolidated financial statement shall be prepared as per end AS 28. Is it clear to you or not? Sir, absolutely clear. Now, so these are the things which as a professional which you need to understand, correct? And most of the time we tend to actually ignore such things and later on we review regarding the, regarding the same. Now I take up case C. In case C, again I stretch a line. I stretch a line once again. In this case, in this case, we presume there is an entity E1 and it has invested in entity E2. When I say it has invested in E2, it means we have purchased what we call equity shares of, let us say, E2. So we have made some investment, but this time the range of investment is 50% or more. Range is 50% or more. It could be up to 100%. So if the range of my investment in other entity is 50% or more or up to 100%, let us say 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, it could be 100%. Obviously, in this case, first of all, you need to understand that investor entity will be, cons investor entity will be considered as parent company. There are so many names actually which we use or which we can use. It is known as parent company. Investor entity E1 will be known as parent entity or it is known as holding company. However, under NDS, we hardly use the word holding company, but it is also known as holding company. Is it clear to you? And 
it can be also termed as acquirer company it can be termed as acquirer company you have to understand these things very carefully mind the words if your investment is 50 percent or more correct in the other entity in that case you will be considered as parent company or holding company or acquirer company while the investee entity the investee entity is the entity in which you have made the investment in this case e2 is the investee entity and the investee entity will be considered as your subsidiary company it will be considered as your subsidiary company is it clear to you now it is also important for you to understand that whenever we acquire more than whenever we acquire 50 percent or more than that in the other entity it means we have acquired the control of the other entity whenever our investment range is 50 percent or more in the other entity it means we have acquired the control of the other entity and that is why in this particular case as i told you this entity because it is under our control it is subordinate to us because we are controlling this particular enterprise this enterprise is known as subsidiary company while we means the investor entity will be considered either as parent company or holding company or acquirer company subsidiary company can also be termed as acquiry company as acquiry company is it clear to you or not acquiry company now you have to pay extra attention in this case parent company will again have to prepare two types of financial statement correct in this case also parent company will have to prepare two types of financial statement one is as i just told a moment ago one is separate financial statement sfs and another one is consolidated financial statement if you have the control over the other enterprise how can you acquire the control over the other enterprise when your investment is more than 50 percent or 50 percent or more is it clear to you you can get the control of the other enterprise only when you have the investment in the other entity in the range of 50 percent to 100 percent number one so if we have got the control over the other entity in that particular case you are the parent company or acquirer company while the other entity will be considered as subsidiary entity or acquiry entity in this case we will have to prepare two types of financial statement as i just told you a moment ago and again you have to understand that separate financial statement shall be prepared as per nds 27 nds 27 as per nds 27 while consolidated financial statement also we will have to prepare in the earlier case see here in the earlier case when our investment range was between 20 percent to 49.99 percent other entity was our associate entity and even in that case i told you that we are supposed to prepare the investor entity will have to prepare two types of financial statements separate financial statement and consolidated financial statement separate financial statement shall be prepared in the light of nds 27 and consolidated financial statement shall be prepared in the light of nds 28 correct in case of associate however in case of subsidiary or acquiry parent company will prepare two types of financial statement one separate financial statement separate financial statement shall be prepared as per the what we call guidelines of india's 27 while consolidated financial statement shall be prepared now most of us are unaware of these minor finer points it is very important is it coming up to your expectations or not first of all let me please give a quick reply so that i can proceed are you able to hear me well enough and are you able to understand first please let me have a quick reply so that i can proceed further with further enthusiasm are you able to understand each and every word so far which i have spoken about please let me know of that Pradeep Bara, soon we are going to announce it. We are working upon it. I have already told you till that time, please try to pay a little bit of attention over here rather than what we call squeezing me for Hindi words and classes. The moment actually I uh, announced these live versions, I'm flooded up with these messages. I'm working on it. Don't worry about it. Thank you, Abhijit, and thank you, Wasimuddin, and thank you, even Pradeep Bara and Kaushik Hos and Abhijit all. So, okay, now we move further. So we have already seen that if you have got the control of the other enterprise, you should not let it skip out of your memory that other entity will be considered as your subsidiary company or acquiry company and you are having the control over the other enterprise, you will be considered either as parent or sub 
or what we call you will be considered either as what we call parent company uh, lots of students are there now. I'm coming over to SSV Varsani. Thank you so much. Balu S. Thank you so much. And Sumera Sao. Keep on actually writing in between so that we can get how many students are over there who have joined us. In SES, nearly 150 students have already joined. SES is very clear to us to watch. But in YouTube, it keeps on flashing. So that is the problem. Anyway, now as far as ca as far as consolidated financial statements are concerned, please. I was deviating a wee bit. Now let me actually recap the things. In this, in the third case, you have to be extra attentive. You have got the control. In this case, you will have to prepare two types of financial statement. One separate financial statement, as usual, it will be prepared in the light of India's 27. However, this time you will prepare consolidated financial statement. See here what I am writing, and this is of paramount importance for you to pay attention. Correct. This time, parent company will prepare consolidated financial statement on the date of acquisition. The date of acquisition means the date on which we got the control. Is it clear to you or not? The date on which we acquired the stakes of the other entity. That is known as date of acquisition. In simple words, date of acquisition means the date on which you got what we call control over the other enterprise. So, Pay attention here. So this time parent company will prepare the consolidated financial statement. It will prepare the consolidated financial statement on the date of acquisition as per India's 103. There are so many people who do not know these basic things and they keep on what we call under a quagmire of confusion when to apply India's 103 and when to apply India's 110. You must understand India's 103 will come into play in this manner, in the AS 103, we are going to prepare the consolidated financial statement on the date of acquisition in the light of NDS 103. Is it clear to you or not? In this case, we are supposed to prepare consolidated financial statement on the date of acquisition and whenever an entity will prepare the consolidated financial statement on the date of acquisition, it will have to prepare what we call consolid consolidated financial statement in the light of NDS 103. Is it clear to you or not? Besides that, when we will reach the year end, correct, at the year end, at the year end, not only at the end of this particular year end, but every year end which would follow after that. That means on the date of acquisition, we will apply NDS 103 to prepare the consolidated financial statement. But when we will reach the what we call year end at the end of the year, again, we will have to prepare the consolidated financial statement. But this time, the consolidated financial statement will not be prepared at as per India's 103. It will be prepared as per India's 110. Is it clear to you? Is it clear to you or not? It will be prepared as per India's 110. Correct? So, on the date of acquisition, we will apply India's 103 to prepare the consolidated financial statement. Remember one thing, both India's 103 and India's 110 deal with the consolidation. Is it clear to you or not? However, when the consolidation will be done on the date of acquisition, you will have to apply India's 103. And after that, at every year end, not only the current year end, but the subsequent year end also, whensoever you are going to prepare after that consolidated financial statement, you will have to apply in days 110. So that is the basic difference between these two. I hope it has become absolutely clearer to you. Please let me know of that also. So these are some significant points which I just wanted to share with each one of you. So now we move a little bit further. I hope you have written all this thing. If some of you intend to write, please write quickly. Correct. <clears throat> Earlier, I told you in the very first case, also I told you if my investment range in other entities in between 1 to 19.99%, in that case, no consolidation is required. These are considered as normal investment. And in this case, investor entity will account these investment in the separate financial statement as per India's 109. I also told you India's 109 simply states that the investment should be what we call booked at fair value. Is it clear to you or not? Now, after that, I told you if my investment range is in, in between 20 to 49.99%, in that case also, 
we are supposed to prepare two types of financial statement. For, first of all, I told you other entity will be considered as our associate entity and we will have to prepare two types of financial statement, separate financial statement and consolidated financial statement. However, consolidated financial statement with respect to associate will be prepared as per India's 28, while the accounting for investment will be done in the separate financial statement as per India's 27. Similarly, if we have got the control over the other enterprise, even in this case, two types of financial statements are required. One separate financial statement, another one consolidated financial statement. An accounting for investment in the investing entity will be recorded in separate financial statement and it will be done as per India S27, while consolidated financial statement will be prepared on the date of acquisition and at the year end and subsequent year end. On the date of acquisition, we apply India S103 and at every subsequent year end, current year end and subsequent year end, we will apply India S110. Is it clear to you or not? Because we have talked a lot about India S27 in this particular case, you need to understand a little bit about what we call India S27 also, a little bit, not, uh, <clears throat> not very high amount, but at least something so that things become more clearer to you. So in the next point, this is the fourth point of our discussion. AS27, what are the provisions of AS27? Because so many times we have used the word in AS27, correct? The investment made by the investor entity in the investee entity, generally such investments are recorded as per AS27 in the what we call separate financial statement. So what does AS27 states? AS27 states that accounting for investment First of all, it deals with accounting for investments, accounting for investments, accounting for investments. It deals with accounting for investments, no doubt about that. It deals with accounting for investments in associate. First of all, you need to understand, correct? It deals with accounting for investment in associates or subsidiary or subsidiary companies and I do not want to confuse you but you also write here and also investment in joint ventures correct now try to understand if I have made some investment in associate or in a subsidiary if I have made the investment in an investing entity and investing entity is my associate, I will have to do the, I will have to prepare the separate financial statement also. Or if I have got the control over the other enterprise, other enterprise will be my subsidiary. Even in that case, I will have to prepare the separate financial statement. And if I have made some investment in other entity and other entity is my joint venture. Even in this case also, I will have to prepare the separate financial statement. We haven't talked about joint venture in this particular session because separately we are going to take the joint venture. Is it clear to you? That's the reason. Now, the provisions of AS27 states that investments will be recorded at, investments will be recorded at cost. Investments, that mean accounting for investment, whatever investment which you have made in the investing entity, you will record those investments at cost, at cost. AS27, India's, sorry, I have written here AS27, India's 27, you please write it, India's 27. So India's 27 simply states that you will record the investment either at cost or, or, or at fair value or at fair value at fair value as per India S109. I have already told you because India S9 deals with financial instruments. We will learn when we will take the chapter financial instrument you will learn over there regarding India S109, 107 and 32. So India S109 states that Everything should be recorded at fair value. I mean to say investment will be recorded at fair value. So AS27 states that entity can record the investment either at cost or it can record the investment at fair value as per India S109. As per India S109. Is it clear to you or not? So these are the important provisions.
Another important provision of India's 27 is that quite obviously as an investor when you are investing in other entity, if you have invested in other entity, quite obviously you are going to receive some income in the form of some dividend. So any dividend income due to such AS27 states that any dividend income, any dividend income which you are going to earn through your investment, any dividend income shall be recorded, any dividend income shall be recorded shall be recorded in separate financial statement. So whatever dividend income which you might have earned, correct, due to your investment, even those, even that income will be recorded in separate financial statement. These are the provisions of AS27. Is it clear to you or not? So after having completed till up to this particular point, now I move over to the fifth portion. I hope till up to this particular point, everything is clear. In between, we talked about control. Do you remember here? I when I took the third case and I told you my if my investment in the other entity is 50% or more, correct? We generally presume that we have acquired the control over the other enterprise. And most of us, us, most among us are under an impression that control can be acquired through majority stakes only. That means if my investment in the other entity is 50% or more, it is generally presumed that we have got the control over the other enterprise. So as a professional student, you need to also understand the meaning of control quite well. Correct. So that's the reason I'm picking up this particular topic now. Control. Try to understand. Control. No doubt about that. No doubt about that. Generally, the control is acquired when you have investment in the other entity and the and generally we call it stakes when i make some investment in the other entity obviously i am going to get some shares of that particular company so if i have got the majority stake majority stake means 50 percent or more correct so if i have got the 50 percent or more of the shares of the other entity generally control lies in my hand no doubt about that but but most of us sometime actually tend to skip some finer points which I just would like to share with you. No doubt about that, as far as control is concerned, you can get the control over the other enterprise, one, through majority stakes. When I say majority stakes, it means when you have 50% or more than correct shares of the other entity, through majority stakes. We can get the control of the other enterprise when we have majority of the share, we call it majority stakes. Actually, we are under an impression that we can, got the we can get the control over the other enterprise only by way of majority stakes. No, that is not the case. You can also get the control over the other enterprise by way of some agreement. What I mean by that? Sometimes we get the control over the other enterprise through agreement. I will explain these points. Correct? In order to explain these points, just pay attention here. For example, suppose entity E1 has 70% stakes of E2. That means entity E1 has invested some amount in E2 and out of total share capital of E2, 70% of the shares are in the hands of E1. So in this case, we may say that majority shares are in our hands, majority stakes is in our hands. So we have got the control. No problem. Correct. However, sometime we can get the control over the other enterprise by way of an agreement. Now pay attention here. For example, there is an enterprise E1. And this enterprise has made investment to the extent of only 30%. Now, if my investment in other entity is 30%, this time on account of voting rights or on account of stakes, I'm not getting the control because my investment is less than 50%. Isn't it or not? If my investment in other entity is less than 50%, I cannot have the control. But, but, in this case, what is happening? E1 has invested in E2 and they have got 30% of the total share capital in their hands. So 30% stakes they have. Further, there is an agreement between E1 and E2. 
there is an agreement between E1 and E2. The agreement says that as per the agreement, as per the agreement, as per the agreement, as per the agreement, E1 shall be responsible, E1 shall be responsible for constituting the board of directors. Correct? E1 shall be responsible or E1 shall have the right to constitute or compose the board of directors of the, what we call this entity. Now, quite obviously, if E1 has got the, what we call right and the power to constitute the board of directors of E2, quite obviously, it means we can completely control E2. So, even though in this case, we are not having the majority stakes, but because we have the power to constitute the board of directors of the other entity, we may say that E2 is in our control and we will be regarded as parent entity and E2 will be regarded as what we call subsidiary entity. Is it clear to you or not? So control always never flows only due to majority stakes. It is important to understand that control can accrue to you on account of some agreements. If you have the right and the power to constitute or compose the board of directors of the other entity, so even though you are not having what we call 50% stakes or more than that, so even in that particular case, it will be it will be construed, it will be presumed, it will be implied that you are having the control. Is it clear to you or not? Is it clear to, this point is clear to everyone, please let me know of that. Please let me know of that. Is this point is clear to you or not? Please let me know of that. We are talking about the control. I told you control can be acquired and generally control accrues due to majority stakes. No doubt about that. But on rare occasions, control can be can flow also on account of such agreement. As I gave you the example, if agreement provides power, if agreement provides power to constitute, to constitute, or compose board of directors. So in that particular case, it will be implied that we are having the control, isn't it? Further, sometime, sometime agreement may take place in this manner. See here, let us say there is another entity by the name of E1 and it has made, let us say 25% of, it has got 25% of stakes or voting rights in E2. That means E2 is having what we call 25% of the share capital of E2. So we are having this much of stakes. Logically, this much of stake will not give us any control, isn't it or not? However, let us say there is an agreement between E1 and E2. When I say there is an agreement between E1 and E2, it means the shareholders of E1 and E2 have agreed that E1 shall have, E1 shall have, shall have, E1 shall have, E1 shall have the right and power, the right and power to direct, right and power to direct, to direct all the relevant activities all the relevant activities, all the relevant activities, all the relevant activities, all the relevant activities of E2. So even though in this particular case, as you must have noticed, we are having it stakes only to the extent of 25%. So on the basis of stakes, we cannot say we are exercising the control over E2. However, because there is an agreement and very specific, very clear agreement, which states that E1 will be in the driver's seat because E1 has been given the right and power to direct all the relevant activities, all the relevant activities of E2. So if we have the power or the right to direct, to control, 
to give direction to the relevant activities, quite obviously it means we are in the driver's seat and we are having the control. So even in this particular case, it will be presumed and construed that E1 is having the control over E2. However, as a professional student, you must be in the know of the meaning of relevant activities. When I said relevant activities, what does it mean? Relevant activities in simplest, in layman's language, you can say such activities upon which the existence and the operations of the investee entity depends. Correct? These are very special, important, significant activities. Correct? And such activities generally are responsible for generating the revenue. Is it clear to you? Generally, under the relevant activity, we include financial activities and operational activities. Financial activities and operational activities. Financial and operational activities. So these are important, significant activities. So now you must have noticed how you can got the how you can get the control over the other enterprise. Generally, the control can accrue to an enterprise, no doubt. Generally, control accrues through majority stakes. However, control may actually accrue to an enterprise, as I told you. Correct on account of a specific agreement, an agreement could be with respect to the composition of board of director or could be with respect to the direction of the relevant activities. Is it clear to you or not? Sir, absolutely clear. If it is clear to you, first of all, let me listen from you. Let me see how many are still present. Correct? Please let me know quickly, actually, how you are feeling now about till up to this particular stage when because we receive your answer, as I tell you, we get further recharged. So this is very important for you to keep on telling us how the things are coming up to your expectations so that we can give you the best possible thing. And you need not require to worry about the course. You can have complete faith and belief upon me. If I have committed that we are going to finish up the course in the widest possible manner and we are going to give you the widest coverage, no doubt about that. Correct? And we will finish the course by 31st of April. So that is very important. CK Acharya, as you are also there, lovely good evening, lovely good evening. And things are clearer to you. It is nice to see that. And what about others? Are the things are not clear to the others? Correct? Only CK Acharya has said that things are absolutely clearer to him. What about others? What about others? Hmm? Well, now slowly and steadily I am getting the answer. It is nice to see that things are absolutely clearer to each and everyone. Now we move a bit further. Next point is very important point. Please pay attention. And this is the point which so many among us neglect. And that is why we fail to understand the gamut of this particular chapter, which is highly technical chapter. Correct? So, so that... So that later on you do not confront and face any trouble in understanding and comprehending the things, I just want to make you aware of a very important facet. See here. Control. Please write also. Control can be. Control can be. Acquired. Control can be acquired. We have seen now that control can be acquired. We have already seen that control can be acquired either through majority stakes. We have already seen that. Correct? In the earlier point, in the preceding point. Control can be acquired through majority stakes. If we have the majority stakes, we will have the control. Control can be also acquired through agreement. We have also seen that. Control can also be acquired in an another manner. And I will let you know, I will let you know about that in a short while but before that let me explain one important point actually what confusion i have seen among the student fraternity during the three decades of my experience whenever we say because so often later on we will tell you that this entity has acquired control of this particular entities and most of the student actually unnecessarily think that the existence of other entity has finished that is the problem 
Suppose I say if I have got 70% share of this particular entity and when we say that we have got the control, many students think that this entity has ceased to exist. No, no, no. Please, please pay attention here. Whenever we are getting the control over the other entity, either through majority stakes or through agreement, both the entities are still in operation. First of all, don't let it actually move into your mind and allow things to move unnecessarily move into your mind that the existence of other entity has finished. No, other entity is still operating. You are still operating. Only thing is that you are controlling this enterprise. Is it clear to you or not? So if we get the control over the other enterprise through majority strikes or by way of agreement, that doesn't mean the existence of the other entity has finished or other entity has ceased to exist. No, no, no. This is not the case. So don't allow this sort of what we call confusion to move into your mind. Is it clear to you whenever we get the control over the other enterprise, only thing is that other enterprise shall operate under our direction, under our complete control, but it will keep on operating. This is the point I just wanted to make you understand. So whenever we get the control through majority stakes, or by way of agreement, generally the existence of other entity will never ever finish. Is it clear to you or not? However, control can also be acquired by purchasing or by acquiring, by acquiring, by acquiring all the assets and liabilities, all the assets and liabilities, all the assets and liabilities. This is the point I just wanted you to actually take care of. So control can be acquired simply by acquiring or taking over all the assets and liabilities of the other entity. Now in this case kindly let me know before I ask you the answer let me actually rub it out. Let us say there is an entity by the name of E2 and we are E1 entity. In this case, what is happening? We have taken over all the assets and liability of this particular company. So when we have taken over all the assets and liability of this particular company in accounting jargon, still it is known as that we are getting the control of this particular enterprise. Now you let me know in this case, whether this particular company will still continue to operate or not. Please let me know of that so that uh, I can get an idea whether you are paying any attention to the lecture or not. Now you let me know if we get the control by acquiring all the assets and liability of the other entity. In this case, will the existence of the other entity come to an end or it will keep on operating? Now you let me know of this. Kindly let me know of this. In this case, whether the existence of this entity will come to an end or not or whether it will keep on what we call operating. I have already told you if we get the control through majority stakes and agreement, the existence of the other entity continues. In this case, what will happen? Will the other entity keep on operating or whether its existence will come to an end or it will cease to exist? Right, give me the answers. No one has given so far. Vasimuddin gave the answer. He is the first one. He gave the answer. The existence of the other entity will come to an end. Ab Mahesh Jado says no. Mahesh Jado, I am sorry to say your answer is wrong this time. When you have acquired all the assets and the liability of the other entity, how other entity can function, you just think for a moment. It is not possible. So in this case, you must understand when we get the control in this manner, when we get the control in this particular manner, then existence of other entity or other entity will cease to exist. Is it clear to you or not? Other entity, other entity shall cease to exist. Other entity shall cease to exist, cease to exist. Now other entity in this particular case will come to an end. 
If other entity will come to an end, quite obviously in this case, no question of preparing any consolidated financial statement. My dear friends, later on when you are going to move problem nowadays with the student fraternity is that they are depending upon tuition classes only. And if faculty is not up to the mark, then sometime you are endangering your future prospects to be very honest with you. Remember one thing, you are achieving a good course, you are achieving a professional course, later on you will have to move into the practical arena and when you will face the interview, such question will be tossed before you. That is the reason I would love you to pay attention to all these things, correct? Now in this case, because generally we say that when we get the control over the other enterprise, we have to prepare the consolidated financial statement. But in this case, because the other entity is no more, how can we consolidate? No question of consolidation. Only separate financial statement will be prepared in this particular case. Is it clear to you? So in this particular case, acquirer entity will prepare only. In this case, acquirer entity or parent entity, acquirer entity shall prepare only shall prepare shall prepare separate financial statement separate financial statement in this case no consolidation will be done because it cannot be done so no consolidation will take place in this particular case no consolidation or no consolidated financial statement I hope now the things are absolutely clearer to you. Is it clear? Absolutely clear, sir. Now it is so nice to hear that. Now, after point number six, so often during the length and breadth of this particular chapter, we would be using a word group. And you know the meaning of group. I need not require to tell you. I know that each one of you are well aware of the meaning of group. It, whenever we say group, what does it mean? Group means, nice to hear from you, Mahesh Jadu. I hope things are absolutely clear and you have told it's clear. A group could be of parent and subsidiary, correct? It A group could comprise of parent and associate as we have already seen, correct? A group could also comprise of parent and a joint venture. Regarding joint venture, you will learn when we will move over to what we call this particular standard where we are going to talk about joint arrangement, joint ventures, joint operations. At this moment, it is suffice to say when we say group, it means we are referring to parent or subsidiary or we are referring to parent or associate or simply we are referring to investor or what we call joint venture. Is it clear to you or not? So group is very simple to understand. Now, under the next point, after taking care of these significant points, now we are moving a bit further. Of course, we are doing NDS 103 and under NDS 103, we have to learn about business combination. What we mean by business combination? First of all, you under, need to understand it. What we mean by business combination? Business combination. In simple words, business combination means when an entity acquires the control over the business of the other entity, then it is known as business combination, correct? So, you simply write here, when an entity, when an entity, when an entity acquires, when an entity acquires control, acquires control, over business of the other entity control over business when an entity acquires control over business of the other entity then it is known as business combination clear Try to understand this particular point. For example, let us say there is E1. I have a habit of taking E1. You can take any other. Let us say E1 has got control over E2. 
has got control over A2 because let us say it acquired 70% stakes in A2. So when we say A1 has control over A2, indirectly it means now we have got the control over A2. Indirectly it means we have got the control over the business of A2. Is it clear to you or not? It is very important to understand that. When an entity gets the control over the business of the other entity or whenever in this particular chapter we will say that this entity has got control over the other entity, it is of paramount importance that other entity must meet the definition of business as given by NDS 103. Is it clear to you? Then only NDS 103 will come into play. That means if I am saying I am getting the control over the other entity, the other entity must meet the definition of a business. Correct? And so this is the next point, let me. So we have to understand the meaning of business also before we move further. I, I told you the other entity must meet the definition of business. What we mean by business, first of all, you need to understand. In DS 103 simply states that business means actually in days 103 defines business to three elements the first element is known as in known as that is inputs first element is known as inputs second element is known as processes and third element is output in order to constitute a business, it is important that entity must have these three elements. Correct? In order to constitute the business, it is important that entity must have these three elements. So, what is business in the eyes of India's 103? Business basically means inputs plus processes plus output. What does it mean? Now you will try to understand. When I say that I am taking control over the business of this particular entity, so this particular entity must meet the definition of a business. What we mean by definition of business, that means this entity, correct, must have some inputs. When we say inputs, it means resources. It means resources. It means resources. And what we mean by resources, resources basically means Resources basically means some fixed asset, intangible asset, manpower, etc. Is it clear to you? This entity must have some resources. Further, this entity must have some techniques or processes. Techniques, T-E-C-H-N-I-Q-U-E-S. It must have some techniques or know-how, K-N-O-W, know-how. And these two things can be combined and integrated. These two things, inputs and process can be combined and integrated, can be combined and integrated. These two things, we should be in a position to combine them and integrate them. So, inputs and process should be or could be actually integrated or combined. And by combining or integrating them, we should be in a position to generate some output. Output stands for revenue. Output stands for revenue. So if somebody asks you, what do you mean by basically business? And why the definition of business is important? Because if I am getting majority stakes in the other entity, I cannot blindly say that NDS 103 will apply, even though I am getting the control over this particular enterprise. This entity must meet the definition of the business. That means this entity must have some inputs, some resources. And by integrating the inputs and the resources, the revenue can be what we call generated. It might not be generating any revenue at this moment. But by combining the inputs and processes, we should be in a position or we, are, we should be capable now to actually generate the resources. Is it clear to you? 
So important point is that whenever in this particular chapter we would say that this entity has got the control over the other entity, we will always presume that other entity is meeting the definition of the business. And just for your knowledge sake, I told you what business in the eyes of India is ended in three. Business basically means the other entity or the concern must comprise of some inputs, some processes. And by combining these resources and techniques, we should be in a position to generate some what we call revenue. Is it clear to you or not? This is the point actually which you need to understand. After having take, taken care of all these things, now we move over to the next part and the next part is accounting part. Next part is the accounting part. Obviously, this is important part. Some of you are writing the messages to say, Sir, please give us a break of at least 10 minutes. No, no, it is not possible to give you a break of 10 minutes because if I will give you a break of 10 minutes, everything will be broken down. It is not possible. Correct? Five minutes. Problem is that these students are our old students. Correct? They have studied from us in their earlier phases of education also and they are quite dear to us. So we cannot say no to them. Okay, we are taking a five minutes of break. In the meantime, you also have a cup of coffee or tea and I will also have a cup of tea and after that 30 more minutes I will require because I told you I will take the class till up to 10. That doesn't mean that I have told that I am going to take the class till up to 10 p.m. So I should actually take the class for 10, till up to 10 p.m. Correct? So we'll take a break of 10 minutes and then we will, uh, what we call, break of 5 minutes and then we will restart. Correct? So till then you simply watch out the ads. So welcome again after the break and we are going to now recommence. Hope you have taken the break and I have also now my cup of tea and if you allow me to take a sip, I will take. It's pretty cold out here today in Germany. Extremely cold. I've never seen such cold wave. Anyway, now we move over to the next part. The next part of course deals with accounting part. Correct? Accounting. I hope each one of you are still there because sometime it happens when we take the break, a student move out. Now we take into account the accounting part. In order to take the accounting part, first of all, you need to understand that this standard in the AS 103 states that the acquirer company will do the accounting on the date of the acquisition. Correct. For example, E1 has acquired, let us say, control of e2 control of e2 on this particular date correct this is the date of acquisition the date on which we get the control is known as date of acquisition and we got control by acquiring 70 percent of the stakes of e2 so on this date i will have to do the accounting is it clear to you or not on this particular date i will have to do the accounting so what are the steps involved in doing the accounting? The first step is that the standard says the first step is to identify the acquirer. Identify the acquirer. Identifying the acquirer. Now what we mean by identifying the acquirer? For example, In this particular case, when I say that E1 has taken, it has got what we call 70% of the stakes of E2, it is quite visible who is the acquirer. Who is the acquirer? You let me know. You let me know who is the acquirer in this particular case. Who is the acquirer in this particular case? If suppose I am going to ask you, obviously we have got the control. So we are the acquirer and E2 will be acquiry company. But in spite of that, the, the standard says that your first step should be to identify the acquirer. It means, it means to identify the accounting acquirer. This step means to identify the accounting acquirer. Identify the accounting acquirer. This step basically means to identify the accounting acquirer. Accounting acquirer. This step says that we have to find out who is the accounting acquirer. Now, first of all, we need to just analyze this particular step. In order to analyze this particular step, pay attention here. When I say 
E1 has got control of E2 by acquiring 70% stakes. No doubt about that. No doubt about that. E1 is legal acquirer. Legal acquirer. That means in the eyes of the law, E1 is the legal acquirer. In the eyes of the law, E1 will be considered as legal acquirer. Legal acquirer means from the perspective of the law, E1 will be considered legally as the acquirer company, while E2 will be considered as legal acquiry. Legal acquiry. No doubt about that. However, however, this particular step says that we have to identify the accounting acquirer. Try to understand, 99.99% legal acquirer itself will be the accounting acquirer. 99.99% legal acquirer will also be the accounting acquirer. First of all, you need not require to worry about this particular point. 99.99% legal acquirer itself will be the accounting acquirer and legal acquiry will be, will not be considered generally as the accounting acquirer because accounting will be done in the books of the acquirer entity and generally the legal acquirer is also the accounting acquirer but under rare circumstances under rare circumstances it may happen it may happen what may happen see here under rare circumstances such a sort of position could be unfolded for example e1 has taken 70 percent of the stakes of e2 and no doubt about that, E1 is the legal acquirer. Correct? E1 is the legal acquirer. From the eyes, from the perspective of the law, we may say that E1 is the legal acquirer. No doubt about that. And E2 will be considered as legal acquiry. Remember, in this particular chapter, in our notes, we have kept nearly 24 sections. So you can gaze and visualize the length and breadth of this particular chapter. And each section comprises of a sort of what we call question and we have kept a separate section for reverse acquisition. I will talk about reverse acquisition later on. Just pay attention here. E1 has got control of 70, uh, control over E2 by having 70% stake. So no doubt E1 is the legal acquirer and E2 is the legal acquiry. Legal acquiry. However, let us say an agreement has taken place between E1 and and E2. An agreement takes place between the, share, between the shareholders of E1 and E2. And as per the agreement, it was decided that it was decided that E2, E2 shall have the right, have the right to control relevant activities. RA means relevant activities. Now in this particular case, even though we are the legal acquirer, even though we are the legal acquirer because we are having the majority stakes and E2 is the legal acquiry. But in this case, if I am going to ask you who is going to be the accounting acquirer, Accounting acquirer will be E2. So, in simple words, sometime under rare situation, it may happen that legal acquiry may not be the accounting acquirer. If such a situation takes place, we call it a case of reverse acquisition. And that is what exactly I was trying to tell you earlier. We have kept a separate section for the same wherein we are going to do some case studies with respect to what we call uh, such sort of what we call situations. Is it clear to you? Otherwise, you need to understand because most of the time in the question, you will be given only this much that E1 has acquired so much of stakes. So, in, under such situations, you need not require to stretch your mind unnecessarily and the legal acquirer itself will be the accounting acquirer. Only when question elaborates like this, so here you will have to exercise a bit of caution to know actually that legal acquirer may not be the accounting acquirer. In this case, accounting acquirer will be what we call E2. Correct? So, in this case, accounting acquirer, that means for the purpose of the accounting, the, for the purpose of accounting, E2 will be considered as accounting acquirer. So, accounting acquirer in this particular case will be E2. 
we will do the accounting in the books of acquirer and E2 will be considered as accounting acquirer because in this case legal acquirer is not the accounting acquirer legal acquirer is not the accounting acquirer that is why in this particular case we may say case of reverse acquisition so it will become a case of reverse acquisition and we will do some lengthy questions on reverse acquisition later on so that is why this particular standard is stretch stresses under point number one that first of all on the date of acquisition you will have to find out in whose books the accounting will be done accounting will always be done only in the books of accounting acquirer and not the legal acquirer is it clear to you that's a different matter i have already told you M more often than not your more often than not your legal acquirer will be the accounting acquirer also but under rare circumstances we may come across such a situation is it clear to you or not now under the second step under the second step what we are supposed to do now the second step deals with identification identification comma recording comma and measurement and measurement and measurement i have already told you because ultimately on the date of acquisition you are supposed to prepare the consolidated financial statement for the purpose of preparing the consolidated financial statement because you are getting the control of the other entity so when we do the consolidation basically what we do we combine the assets of the group entity i already told you what we mean by group group means the parent entity in this case acquirer entity acquirer entity is also known as parent entity and acquiry entity so we will combine their assets and liabilities and we will simply put them in a single statement that statement is known as consolidated financial statement so in simple words your next step deals with how you are going to record the assets and liabilities because you are getting the control over the other enterprise so because you are having the control over the other enterprise obviously all the assets and liabilities of that company because in order to prepare consolidated financial statement it will be presumed that as if you are taking over their assets and liabilities so you will have to record their assets and liability in your books so the general principle is that please pay attention it is very important to understand the general principle is that all the assets and liabilities of the acquiry company all the assets and liability of the acquiry company will be recorded by the acquirer entity at fair value this is the general principle this is the general principle please pay attention here for example this is for simplicity's sake i'm preparing the balance sheet in this manner let us say this is the balance sheet correct this is the balance sheet of acquiry entity acquiry entity acquiry entity is one which is being taken over by or whose control is taken over by the acquirer entity obviously acquiry company will have some assets and will have some liabilities no doubt about that now you have to record those assets and liability in your books is it clear to you that is what we mean by identification recording and measurement it is very important that all the assets and liabilities will be recorded and you will pass the entry this is the acquirer entity this is the acquirer entity acquirer entity now acquirer entity how it will record whatever assets which are appearing over here we are going to record them by debiting those assets and whatever liabilities are appearing over here we are going to record them asset account debit to liability account simple entry no problem at all but the point is that all the assets and liabilities you are going to record at fair value this is very important fv when i am writing fv it means it is fair value this is the general principle that all the assets and liabilities of the acquiry company will be recorded by the acquirer company at fair value 
correct whether they are appearing in the books of acquiry value at book value or at whatever value irrespective of that we have to see to it on the date of acquisition what is the fair value and on the basis of fair value we are going to record all the assets and liability of the acquiry company is this particular point is clear to everyone let me know is this point is clear because it is very important to know from the student fraternity whether you are getting and comprehending the things or not is this point is clear to everyone when i said jet at whatever value it might be appearing in the books of acquiry company you have to record them at fair value this is the general principle is it clear to you this is the general principle so under step this is our second step of accounting and here i am elaborating point number 1 or point number a now we come over to second point under the second step second step deals with in simple words identification recording and measure one correct now under the second case point is that the general rule is that all the assets and liability will be recorded by the acquirer entity at fair value correct this is the general principle common principle correct however there may be some exceptions there may be some exception and you have to take care of those exceptions because so many among us tend to neglect this particular point at all and then only the problem we face the general principle is that we have to record assets and liability at fair value however now we are moving over to some exceptions there are some exception to this general principle exceptions what are those exceptions now we shall talk about some exceptions pay attention here let us say this is the balance sheet of acquiry entity this is the balance sheet of acquiry entity correct towards your right side when i am preparing the let us say this is the balance sheet of e2 and you know e2 is the acquiry entity correct i have already told you acquiry company will have some assets and some liability without any doubt correct let us say this acquiry entity has got a contingent liability cl please pay attention and you write in full form it is not current liability it is contingent liability it is having a contingent liability as you know contingent liability are not recorded in the balance sheet because if contingent liability will be recorded in the balance sheet it will become a liability is it clear to you first of all you need to understand what is contingent liability contingent liability as a professional student you need to give answer like a professional student and especially of a final level student contingent liability means see here suppose i am at the end of the accounting year i am at the end of the accounting year and there is some obligation there is some obligation that obligation on the reporting date is known as present obligation any obligation on the reporting date is known as present obligation obligation means you have some sort of pressure some sort of foundation because you have to oblige something you are under some sort of pressure correct foundation there is a present obligation let us say a customer has filed a case on your entity you are e2 entity acquiry entity and your customer has filed a case upon e2 clear and the case is still pending so there is a present obligation because a case has been filed by the customer but but you have considered it as a contingent liability because because in your opinion in your opinion chances of outflow of funds chances mm -hmm. this pen actually slides so hard it sometimes becomes difficult to control it chances of outflow of funds chances of outflow of funds does not exist you are of the opinion that even though case has been filed and case is still on but e2 or directors of e2 might be under an impression that chances or probability of outflow of funds is remote correct so there is no probability of outflow of funds so if there is an obligation and we feel that there will not be any outflow of funds and probability of outflow of funds is very slim very less we consider it as contingent liability 
and contingent liability is always reflected as a footnote. Correct? That means it is not recorded in the balance sheet. This is the balance sheet. This liability, this item is not appearing in the balance sheet. But now E1 is taking the control over E2. E1 is the acquirer entity. We will still record this contingent liability. Try to understand this particular point. Even though this liability, this contingent liability is not appearing in the balance sheet of E1. But still we are going to record it. Still we are going to record it. Try to understand this particular point. We are still going to record it. The standard says that the acquirer company will also record the contingent liability. Is it clear to you? Provided. See here. First of all, let me actually write here. It, first of all, let me also explain to you that it is an exception. The general principle is that all the assets and liabilities which are appearing in the books, this is the general principle which are appearing in the balance sheet of acquiry company will be recorded and recorded at fair value. But now we are violating this. We are going against this principle because we are recording an item which is not appearing in the balance sheet. The general principle is, see the difference between and mind the language here. What I am saying actually, if an item appears in the balance sheet, the general principle is that whether asset or liability, if it is appearing in the balance sheet of acquiry company, we will have to record it, record it at fair value. This is the general principle. But here we are recording an item which is not appearing in the balance sheet. That is why it is an exception. And we will see later on, it is known as an exception to recognition principle. We are recognizing this uh, what we call as a liability. We have to record this item as a liability. Is it clear to you or not? We will have to record this item as a liability and it is known as exception to recognition principle. Exception to recognition principle. Exception to recognition principle. So we will have to recognize it as a liability. As you know, contingent liabilities are never recognized as what we call liability. But still the acquirer company will have to recognize this as a liability in its books. Is it clear to you or not? And why it is known as an exception to recognition principle, you should also understand that. Because generally contingent liability are not recorded as a liability. They are written generally under the footnote. But we will have to recognize it. So in simple words, if an item of acquiry company is not appearing in the balance sheet and still we are recording it of course we are recording it as a liability or as an asset then it is known as an exception to recognition principle exception to recognition principle is it clear to you or not so in the light of india s 37 we will have to recognize this item is it clear to you irrespective of outflow of funds this is a very important point now, under step number two, we have taken A, B, and now I am moving over to C. Point number C. Point number C. Pay attention. In this case also, in this case also, let us say this is the balance sheet of E1. This is the balance sheet of E1. Correct? This is the balance sheet of E1. Obviously, there are some items assets there are some liabilities also of the acquiry entity sorry e2 i have written e1 actually it is e2 now in this particular case i will write here first of all e1 let us say there are some items in the books of what we call e2 like a1 a2 a3 similarly there are some liabilities l1 a2 l3 L1, L2, L3. Some liabilities are there in the books of acquiry company. Is it clear to you or not? <clears throat> in this case, the, what is the general principle? General principle is all the assets and liabilities which are appearing in the books of the acquiry company will be recorded over here. And generally, all these items are recorded at fair value. This is the general principle under point number 2A we saw that. Isn't it or not? This is the general principle. But sometime what happened, we record all the assets or some of the assets which are appearing, what we call on the asset side and the liabilities which are appearing on the liability side, 
the general principle is that we have to record them at fair value we will we are recording them but we are not recording them at fair value we are not recording them at fair value we are recording that these are the assets and liabilities of acquiry company we will have to record them but we are not recording them at fair value the general principle is that we have to record them at fair value but we are not recording at fair value if some items which are appearing in the balance sheet of the acquiry company and you are recording them but not recording them at fair value then it becomes exception to measurement it becomes exception to measurement it is a case of exception to measurement exception to measurement because here we are deferring the measurement rules because generally all the assets and liability appearing in the books of the acquiry company will have to be recorded at fair value but we are not measuring them at fair value then how we will measure them and what are those items what are those exceptions i will let you know in a short while just pay attention the, it is known as exception to measurement principle it is known as exception to measurement principle measurement principle it is known as exception to measurement principle is it clear to you or not and generally such items comprises of such items comprises of share based payments sbp i am writing in short form share based payment e2 limited might have announced an scheme share based payment scheme you will learn about that because you have already a chapter in the form of india 102 wherein we are going to learn a lot about share based payment so even at this particular moment if i am if i am going to tell you something you are not going to comprehend so for the simplicity's sake i am simply telling that acquiry company might have announced a share based payment scheme so you are going to record that you are going to record them but you are not going to record them at fair value then at what value you will record them in the light of india s 102 that as per the provisions of india s 102 because india s 102 deals with what we call share based payment similarly second point assets held for sale assets held for sale assets held for sale in the balance sheet of acquiry company there might be some assets appearing and those assets are meant for sale correct due to some or any other reason so we will record those assets assets held for sale will be recorded but not at fair value then at what value first of all we will record them in the light of india s 105 because later on we will see that india s 105 deals with assets held for sale and india s 5 states that assets held for sale shall be recorded at fair value fair value less cost of disposal cost of disposal some of you may say sir still we are recording them at fair value we are not recording them at fair value we are recording them at fair value less cost of disposal less cost of disposal is it clear to you or not then next point is reacquired rights reacquired rights reacquired rights reacquired rights what we mean by reacquired rights let us say e1 is a very famous company very reputed company it has got a tremendous market correct tremendous name it's a tremendous brand name and it has given its name or brand to be used by e2 before the business combination correct earlier e2 was functioning as a separate entity and we were functioning as a separate entity and we have a good brand name so let us say we have allowed e to use our brand name for a particular period quite obviously because e2 limited has acquired our brand name that brand name must be appearing as an asset in the what we call books of e2 limited now what happens let us say after four five years e2 e1 limited acquires e2 limited if we are acquiring e2 limited then what will happen it means the right which we had given to them earlier three four years ago now we will take them back that is known as reacquired rights correct 
So any reacquired right appearing on the asset side of the acquiry company will have to be recorded, but it will be recorded not at fair value. And then at what value? We, we have kept a separate section, correct, where we are going to discuss the reacquired right, correct? And there is a separate section by the name of pre-combination relationships. Over there, I will let you know exactly how the measurement is done. But here, I will simply write, it will be measured as per the remaining terms of the contract. As per remaining terms. For example, we had given them this particular brand name or franchisee or trademarks to be used for 10 years. And after four years, we took control of this particular entity. That means six years are still remaining. So as per remaining contractual terms, we will measure them. As per remaining contractual terms, 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 we are going to measure it. So these are known as exception to. Remember you one thing, nowadays you are facing lots of MCQs also. In the MCQ, such question may be tossed up in the examination. So that is the reason why you have to pay extra attention towards this particular point. Is it clear to you or not? Clear? Anyway, so we are still this particular point is on. We have to discuss a lot under this. And we will continue our finishing today's this particular session. Reason being is that actually I have to start another class. And that is also the reason also we have exceeded the time limit by 10 minutes no doubt about that hope the class must have come up to your expectation we'll talk a lot about this particular thing and we are going to do lots of questions those among you who have already subscribed to our courses they know actually that we do the widest possible coverage correct rest assured if you can have the complete faith and belief Correct, not only in your own instincts and upon us also, then we will see to it that each one of you come out with what we call best possible performance. So on such count, I take leave of you and looking forward to have your feedbacks, not only in the chat box, you have written your messages in the chat box regarding the class, regarding the uh, what we call entire today's session. But I would like each one of you to write the comment in the comment boxes of the YouTube so that other people can also see that and get motivated to join these classes so time to say good night and before that i would love to hear from you how you felt about today's this particular session correct let me know of that quickly before i wrap it up and we will continue that from this particular point in the next session tomorrow correct tomorrow at uh, 8 30. no one is giving any answer Should I presume that everyone has left or is still there? So the first one is Abhijit. Thank you so much. And uh, you have written something else. I'm not able to see that. But thanks very much for your reply. And at the same time, I'm very thankful to each one of you who have given their responses. But as I told you, and uh, as I told you that you must write these sort of what we call regarding the true feedbacks in the what we call comment boxes of the YouTube. Correct? Because these are chats and chats get erases out. So no one other will be able to watch it. I would love each one of you to write what we call response in the YouTube. So on such note and request, now it's time to say good night. And it is already what we call 12 past 10 here in Delhi. Extremely cold today. And thank you, each one of you. So tomorrow we will start, but not at 8 p.m. It is not possible, Mahesh Chado. It, we can start it only at 8.30. Uh, you must understand that I have to take FR classes separately because we have separate courses for CA, CMA and etc. So that is the reason. Okay, then shall meet you in the next class at 11.30, taking leave of you now and have a lovely, lovely good night.